Hello. Hi, y'all. How are you doing tonight? Um, very interesting topic tonight. At least I think so. Uh, and I saw, I went ahead and I put up a poll to see what you all wanted to see uh, next from those things that I listed. And I am going to get a day in the life of a cybersecurity policy analyst up here for you all to see um, this week. Okay, I have some footage and all that, so I just got to put it all together. And I think I'm going to do it live, I think, you know, and just show you some of the footage while I'm talking about it instead of making the video uh, and posting it up here. Okay, I'm going to do it that way. Let me sure I got all my brands and banners and all that right. Okay, so there's two main things I want to talk about tonight. All right, number one is the down low subculture that we have in cybersecurity, okay? And number two, I wanna talk about an interview that happened on Security Weekly today. I posted it on my community wall. So if you went over there, you already know what I'm talking about, but we're gonna get into both of those things, okay, right now. So number one, let's talk about this down low subculture. Now down low, we know is a term that's used in our culture, in American culture, okay, which means down low is a subculture of men and women, you know, and other, but we normally, you know, think about it in terms of men, okay? So it's a subculture of men who in public, you know, identify as heterosexual, but actually either only or also enjoy having sex with other men, okay? So when someone is down low, that just means, you know, in public, in order to, you know, it's, it's called a form of impression management is what it's called, impression management. So you want people to think you're a certain way. Uh, okay, you know, n that's not outside of the so-called norm, okay? But in reality, uh, you're not actually that way, all right? Or you're you're like that plus something else that you don't want people to know about. So you keep it on the down low, you know, that's what they say. But that's not what I'm talking about here, okay? I don't care what cyber professionals do in, in the bedroom. I don't, I don't care. That's not, what, you know, that's not it. However, we do have a down low subculture in cybersecurity. And I've defined it for you, all right? And it, it's, it's close to what that one is. So... Our down low subculture in cybersecurity is that there are people here in the profession who publicly identify as being conscious and concerned about the security of men, women, children, and businesses, but behind closed doors, okay, blood, rushes to the nether regions, okay? Dopamine, I mean, is just off the charts in the mind as they experience all kinds of pleasure when discovering the vulnerabilities of humans and exploiting those vulnerabilities, okay? Let, let me, I, I went through it slow. So let me say it. Let me say it. Hey, Ayana, how you doing? So the subculture, again, let me say it a little bit quicker so you, so you get it, okay? The subculture of down low cybersecurity professionals, okay, is men, women, and other, all right, who, you know, in public, portray themselves as being conscious and concerned about the security of human people and businesses, okay? Like that's what they act like. But in reality, the blood rushes to their nether regions when they're hacking into some stuff, okay? Not only are they thinking like hackers, okay? Criminal hackers. Not only are they thinking, because you know, you know that's like the mantra. Okay, think like a hacker. But when you're thinking, 
there's three other things that are also happening when, when you're thinking. Think about anything, whether it's about hacking or pizza or the, your next vacation, whatever, it don't matter. Three other things that are happening with that thinking. You have behavior, I'm sorry, you have action, you have physiology, and you got feelings. So not only are you thinking like a hacker, you acting like one, your body is reacting like one, okay? And the feelings that you're getting are also those same feelings. You understand? That's the download culture, okay? So what, what, let, let me tell you what you're not going to do, okay, is act like we don't see that, <laughs> okay? That's what you're not going to do. You're not going to act like we don't see you, okay? You think you're down low, but... You know, you know what what our moms say. What what is it that speaks louder than words? Actions. Mm -hmm. And actions come with all those other things: thinking, physiology, and feelings. That the whole the whole pie is called behavior. Okay, that, that, that's the whole thing. It's called behavior. We see the behavior. All right. <laughs> okay. And and I, you know, you're not going to convince me that. The behavior that you don't enjoy that you don't enjoy finding weaknesses in people and exploiting it. They enjoy it, you know, and, and y'all do, too. So just I mean, number, just be honest about it. You know, I like hacking into stuff. You know, I, I, I really do enjoy this. And that's the like, that's the end game. The end game is the hacking, not security. They, somebody wrote an article here. What is that article? But so before I get to that, right? Let me talk about a little bit more about behaviors, okay? And and what behaviors show? Now, now this is life one hundred and one, okay? This applies to everything, every single thing, everything. Behaviors are like a mirror, okay? They're like y'all see me behaving, oh, you know, I'm moving around, I'm looking at the camera, I'm talking, I'm you know sitting on a chair, all that, what all that stuff. Y'all see all that. OK, you, you see the actions and all behavior is like a mirror. It's a mirror of what you believe. OK, right now, your beliefs are spe I mean, they're just screaming out loud. Every time somebody looks at you, your your beliefs, the things you think are hidden in a the background, mm -mm, they're not hidden. They're right here. They're right on camera. OK, <laughs> that's where they are, because they they. What you do is the same thing as what you believe, okay? Now, let me give you an example. Flat earthers. Now, I'm not coming for flat earthers, okay? I'm not coming for y'all, okay? So don't come for me. I'm just using y'all as an example, okay? Flat earthers uh, claim the earth is flat, all right? Like, it's, it's flat. It's not round, it's flat, okay? But is that what they really believe? Like, like come on now. Is that what they really... What If you thought, you, if you thought that if you went too far, you would fall off the edge, wouldn't you be doing stuff different than everybody else? Like everybody, if, if you on planes, trains, and automobiles, okay, going further and faster than I'm going... You know, and I believe the earth is round. Do you really believe? Do you really? <laughs> I'm, I'm just asking. Is that what you believe? Okay. No, it's not. It's not like you may be part of the group. You know, you, you may you may put on the, the flat earth jersey and, and go to the conferences, you know, and, and eat the flat earth recipes and all that. Okay. But if you doing the same thing, nothing different other than talking about it. OK, that is not what you believe. Not at all. Because if you really believed it, we would know. We would see you have put, you know, tape around how far you are willing to go and you ain't going no further. I don't, you don't care what nobody say. All right. So but let me let me tell you this. Let me tell you the explanation. One of the explanations as to why it is flat but they still do what everybody else does. Y'all remember how uh, Pac-Man, how, how we how we 
play Pac-Man. If y'all don't know, if you're too young to know what Pac-Man is, just Google it. Okay, you'll see the Pac-Man game. Uh, Ayana, I'll tell you right now. Look, th this is what one of the explanations are. Just like when you play Pac-Man and you go to the edge of the screen, you go to the edge of the screen on, on, the, on this side and Pac-Man come out on the other side. That, that's what's happening. That's why you don't fall off. Because when you go to the edge, you're teleported to the other. Look, I'm just telling, I'm the messenger. I'm telling what they said and, and, and you know, <laughs> and that's it, okay? But, but even if that's the case, even if, like, so what's the shape of teleportation? Okay, because apparently it ain't flat because stuff that's flat has an edge and you fall off, right? So, you, you know, so the point I'm trying to make here Okay, is that if if it quacks like a duck, okay, <laughs> if it quacks like a duck, then it's probably a duck, okay. If if you know if 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 you feel like the the pleasure is just ooh is just child, I mean you know when, when you're breaking into something, if it quacks like a duck, okay. Now, let, let me let me read some of this article to you here. So this person wrote something. And uh, where is it? Here you go. I'm just going to read a little bit of part of it. I read all this. Uh, I don't know if it's a male or female who wrote this. But they say, over the course of my career, I have met many hackers, self-proclaimed and bona fide, okay, and remain friends with many of them. And while they are extremely talented at hacking, they could not secure their way out of Starbucks with a cup of coffee. That's what this person said right here. And what I know is that that's true. Okay, what I know is that that's true. Okay, you, you, because the story we hear is, oh, I'm doing this so I can secure better. Okay, so, 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 Number one, my last name is Abram, okay? So even if my first name was Boo-Boo, I still couldn't be Boo-Boo the Fool, okay? Still, because my last name, Abram. So that's number one. Number two, I don't eat turnips, so there's no reason for me to be on a turnip truck to fall off of it, all right? That is bull malarkey if I've ever heard it, okay? If I've ever heard it, because you've been saying that for twenty over 20 years now, 20 years. OK, so so we so we're not going to do all that. All right. I ain't going. I'm not going. I'm not going. You apparently get other folks to go, but I'm not. All right. I, I ain't going with all that, because just like they said, I could tell you how to break. Listen, I've never broken into a house. I've never broken into a car. I've never broken into a bank. I mean, so many things I've never broken into. OK, but I know and appreciate security. I, I know and appreciate that. I do. Mm hmm. I, I, I do. So what's going on here? So let, let me th this is what you all want to do. OK, you, you claim you're doing it, but you're not. But let me tell you what what you want to do. If you actually want to be a security professional and and I'm saying this because I feel like there are a lot of people in this profession who want to be security professionals like they do. But when they came in the door. All they heard was hacking and OSCP and CEH. And you ain't gonna be able to get here if you if you don't know how to hack. And you can't be a good blue team if you don't know red team. And, you know, that's all they heard. So they're doing what they think the professionals who know what they're talking about are telling them to do, okay? So they really want to be in security. They, they've just been misled, okay? They've been misled and, and told, you have to learn how to set good fires to be a really good firefighter. Okay. That's what they've been told, you know? So let me tell you something else. All right. What's happening when you claim you're thinking like, like a hacker or, or what you want to happen. Let me say that. You want to develop empathy. You're not going to call it empathy, you know, but that's what it is. When you, when you walk in somebody else's shoes, that's empathy, all right? So what's the purpose of empathy though? What's the end game of empathy? Huh? 
Is this thing on? What's the end game of empathy? <laughs> I'll tell you. Okay. There is none. There's no end game for empathy. If you got some kind of goal, that's yours. But the function of empathy is, is not to, to get anything or, or to do. What's happening when you develop empathy for somebody and you don't have to actually do what they do, how they do it, when they do it to develop empathy. OK, but y'all claim that that's what y'all doing. All right. So let's go with that. So what happens when you when you recognize and develop empathy for another person, group perspective? you know, whatever. It's like, it's like a Lego piece. Like you, like, it's like you're made out of Legos. Okay. Developing empathy puts another piece onto you. Okay. That now, you know, meshes with everything else that's there. All right. That that's, that's what empathy. Now you can choose to use that information. You can choose to use that experience that you've had walking in somebody else's shoes for something like you can choose to okay now that i see that when when criminal hackers you know do this this is how they feel they feel really excited they get a lot of pleasure from this okay now, now that i see that now that i see that these are the ways they attempt to to get into various systems okay now that i see that i see that all right if my goal is security, if I actually am a security professional, whether I'm in cyber or not, you don't need machines to be a security professional. Do you know that? Do you know you don't need computers to be a security professional? Are, are, are we aware of that? Huh? You don't need an information system to be a security professional. You don't. Security is much bigger than that. And I'm going to let you hear somebody who's saying the exact same thing. OK, if that's your goal, because you do work in a field where information systems are, are, are you know, ubiquitous, they're all over the place. OK, so you want to practice security in that, you know, in, 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 in that profession. If your goal is security versus insecurity and taking, you know, advantage of a person's vulnerabilities, right? If your goal is security, then you use that empathy for security. If you know that criminal hackers get a shot of dopamine and pleasure when they break into your mother's system, your father's systems, your child's bedroom laptop, when you know that they get that kind of pleasure doing it, okay, and they don't give a damn who it hurts or nothing, what are you doing with that information? From a security perspective, what are you doing with that? Hmm. My question is, what's the end game? I, I, I've been asking this since I'm, almost since I got in the damn profession. What's the end? Because I didn't see that. All I saw was more, 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 and more. And more. Now we got conferences just about breaking into cars and shit. You know, what's the end game? That's always been my question. You know. If there is no, and if that's what, if that's the goal, the pleasure, the blood rushing to the genitals, okay? If that's the goal, you DL, bro. <laughs> you DL, sis, all right? You, you're, you're, you've infiltrated a security profession is what you've done. Right, that's what you've done, all right? And we see you. We see you. You ain't hiding. Okay, I, I just wanted to let y'all know that. Now, let me show you this other thing about, I'm going to read this real quick, about the dopamine. And then we're going to move on to the next topic. So y'all, I'm sure y'all know about dopamine, but if you don't, it's all over the place. Just go, you know, look it up. But dopamine is known as one of the four happiness hormones. It's a brain hormone that is linked with pleasure, motivation, and reward. Pleasure, motivation, and reward. Some of y'all will stay up for days trying to hack into a box. You won't eat. You won't sleep. Pleasure, motivation. And when you finally get there, that reward. So now that wears off. So now what you're going to do? Are you going to use that information 
for security or you're going to find a harder box to get into. I'm asking. I'm just asking. That's all I'm doing. I'm asking. I'm asking and I'm letting you know. We see you. Okay. We see. You. All right. So let's get to this next topic. Now, I had the pleasure <laughs> of virtually meeting an amazing person today. All right. Um, I am subscribed to Security Weekly, the YouTube channel. I've, I've talked about that channel before. They have some really good folks on there. Okay. Let me take a drink of my Orangina. Y'all, I love this stuff. Did I tell y'all about Orangina? This stuff is so good. Uh, it's real good. It's like orange juice, but better, you know? So, um, yeah. Let me show you who he is real quick. Up his, um, I love this. This website is really, really nice. That picture is uh, really awesome. His name is Barack. Okay. I knew he had to be something if his name was Barack. Knew he had to be good, chap. There he go. What's his last name? Barack in... I don't want to get it wrong. Oh, Engel is right there in his, in his website. Barack Engel. Okay. He, um, and I'm going to interview him on this channel sometime in the new year, but he had an interview with Security Weekly. His new book, Meet the Security Hippie, is here. Now, y'all have, pro y'all probably know him from his other book. Uh, what is it called? The Summer of a CISO. What, what's the other book called? Why CISOs Fail, I, I, I think it is. Sparkling Orange Juice is better than that. It's something like that, but better. So, um, yeah, so this is Barack. Okay. Now, oh, here it is. Why Sisos Fail? That's his other book right there. Mm -hmm. This book like $45, child. I think they use it in school or something like that, but I'm sure it's amazing. Okay. Because just listening to him today was just awesome. And I was so, it really got my, now I, I listen to a lot of interviews. Like I do. I listen to a lot of people doing different things and interviewing and cause I, you know, cause I want to hear different perspectives and all that, you know, um, so I was listening to his and it got, I mean, it just got my attention because I'm like, hold on a second. <laughs> Wait a minute. Like, I, you know, I, I so there's a video I made. Y'all know I called the Mediocre CISO, right? I made that video. There's another one I made called Throw the Whole Profession Away. Okay. And I lost like 20 subs when I posted that video. Okay. So I'm like, this dude is saying like some of this and it was nice. It was really nice because I told my friend, I said, it's, it feels like, like I'm the crazy one, you know, like that, that hacker rights thing, like nobody talking about, like nobody, nobody got nothing to say about this. Not one person. Okay. And then some of the other stuff I'm talking about, I'm like, I, I can't be the lone read out here with these views because this shit is so obvious to me, uh, you know? So I, I don't know if folks are just ignoring it or if, you know, I'm losing my mind. <laughs> okay. So it was nice to hear somebody speaking the same, who, who I can actually talk to and they get it. Not only do they get it, they see it. They see it. Okay. It was really nice. I, and I, I really, I got on that, I got on LinkedIn so fast. <laughs> he was still interviewing child. I was like, I'm listening to you, da, 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 you know. And I wrote him a note and stuff like that. So, but let me tell you some of the, we're going to listen to a little bit of what he said, but let me, I wrote down some stuff while he was talking that I was like, this is, I mean, it, it's just amazing. Okay. So what he does, he says is, is uh, essentially he has his own business, helping businesses mature security and contextual at a contextually appropriate manner, you know, in a step-by-step -step way. So, when I clicked on the video, a, another lady was talking. Hey, Professor Black Ops. She was talking and she was, so I hadn't heard his comment before, but she was commenting on what he said. And she was saying, well, I wouldn't say that, you know, companies don't need security because, you know, I, I, I 
I do all this and that and those other things. And, you know, they really need security. And, um, you know, so he clarified what he meant by that. But let me read you some of the other stuff that I heard on, on it. Now, it was him and like three other people that were on. Uh, we have to be, we have to have a symbiotic relationship with businesses, not parasitic, symbiotic, not parasitic. Okay. So the, uh, the other guy on there said this one, uh, I think Barack said we have to make more security versus, no, no. The other guy said this, we have to make more security versus making, no, no. He said, let me get this right y'all. What we tend to do is make more security versus making businesses secure. That's what he said. Like we're all about security, all about it. Uh, we are causing harm and decreasing security. Okay. Uh, I would like to see the profession as we know it die. Now, when I heard that, I'm like, oh my goodness. Like I've never... You know, I said throw the profession away. I ain't say it need to die, but you know, that's pretty much <laughs> it's pretty much the same thing. Uh, what else he said before I play some of his stuff? He said, whatever drives business decisions should drive security decisions. Okay. Hey, Corey. Hey, it's been a while since I've seen you. So glad to see you here. Whatever drives business decisions should drive security decisions. He said. Security is not a technology discipline. Okay. And I know some people's heads are going to explode with that. All right. Security is everywhere. Come on now. Hey, Corey. Uh, he said, we are not the God of the gate. As an I protect the company. Well, you know, and a lot of us have that attitude. I was reading a zero trust document the other day, okay? And the security person put in there that we have to balance control with security. And I'm looking at that like, like what you talking about Willis? You know, <laughs> we gotta ba like who are you? <laughs> balance control. Child, okay, let me see. So he said, Barack said, and, and I, I believe he might explain it on this clip that I'm going to play. He said, when I hear when I hear CISOs in particular say I protect the company, he he asked them, okay, if you protect the company, explain to me the company's cash flow, huh? How how many would be able to do that? You know, another very, very interesting thing he said, and I absolutely love is, where is it? Hold on, y'all, I got to find it because I want to get it right now. He was talking about the training that CISOs need, okay? He said, number one, they need psychology 101 because you ain't going to do ish effectively if you don't understand people you know security is a people profession that's what it is it's a people profession if you think you and your team of six and your 10 million dollar sock okay your, your so it's seven of y'all with a 10 million dollar sock Versus 20,000 employees making decisions left and right in every second of the day, okay? You think y'all just going to protect this organization? I believe you have several seats with that, okay? <laughs> uh, that's not. It's a people profession, all right? It's person-centered, hello? That's what it is. He says, psychology 101, and the next one is business. Business. Y'all remember when I uh I, I was talking about how you know and, and we know this, like we know this. He's not he's not saying anything, he's saying a lot of stuff that 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 would make people angry. 
Okay. A lot of, but it's not stuff that we don't know. Do you know how you get mad when somebody tell you something you already know? Like, you know, that dude wrong for you. Why are you with him? And how we get, you know, that girl using you for your money. You know, you know this, but you get so mad when somebody tell you. You know that job using you. You need to be, be getting paid more than that. You know, why you let that lady treat you like that? You know what I'm saying? You know. They ain't telling you nothing you don't know. But you get real mad. That's the case right here. We know all this. We know. <laughs> so why aren't we doing anything? Why aren't we doing anything differently uh, than we are right now? Why do we keep doing the same shit? Huh? It goes back to that dopamine I was talking about. Mm -hmm. Because we're getting something from it. That, nobody in this universe, nobody, does or believes anything if they are not getting something from it. Be it what we do and, and believe about what we do, is, it's a meal ticket, okay? We're trying to get what's on the other side of that belief or behavior, even if it's, I mean, it's tearing us apart, okay? There's something in there that we like. That's why we keep doing it. That, that's why we know all this stuff he's talking about, but we ain't doing nothing different. While, while he talking, I'm planning my next uh, uh, Hack the Box session. I ain't doing shit different. I ain't going to no sort of psychology courses. I, ain't going to, I don't care nothing about the business. I ain't doing none of that. Uh, uh, here I go. Tell me what I need to do to comply. Let's put these stigs on and, and let me, you know, collect this check and come back here. Nothing. Nothing different. Nothing. <laughs> Y'all, I took a nap today. I'm on one. Okay. I I'm, I'm refreshed. All that. All right. So let me let me let you hear because he speaks way more elegantly about it than, than I do. Now I'm going to use my phone. Let, let me, uh, Y'all let me know if you cannot hear. If you cannot hear this, okay? Let me see where we at now. I gotta get to the right time stamp. Okay, let me see. So I, I think uh, I, I want to be careful, right? Can you hear because it? Because it seems like you're interpreting what I'm saying as the company doesn't need security. That's not what I'm saying at all. All I'm saying is let that me know if you if can hear it. Okay. With 50 employees or even 100 employees goes out and hires a five-person security team, which seems to be the trending recommendation in the valley these days those people will not have full time okay nobody's saying anything so i'm assuming you do not hear this do you hear it or not because i was playing it and i got my bluetooth connected i need somebody to respond and let me know if you hear it or not hey i'm gray how you doing our keyboards working out that what's going on hello can y'all hear what I was uh, doing? It's working. Okay, thank you, M. Gray. Let me turn it. Let me uh, let me turn it back a little bit. I want you to. Oh shit. Okay, here we go. A lot of people in DevOps, etc., are, are very security conscious. A lot of us actually that are in security didn't actually even come from a security background. We came from like a networking background or just a general IT yeah. administration background. So. so so I, okay, I this think, is him right uh, here. I, I want to be careful, right? Because it seems like you're interpreting what I'm saying as the company doesn't need security. That's not what I'm saying at all. All I'm saying is that if a company with 50 employees or even 100 employees goes out and hires a five-person security team, which seems to be the trending recommendation in the Valley these days, those people will not have full-time jobs to do, and they will likely because they come without the experience of understanding things like the impact that security can have on business operations, not on technology. Technology is a facet of security. It's a, it's a small facet of security in my mind. Um, um, at the end of the day, they're, they're going to weigh the company down. They're going to create a lot of dissatisfaction. And again, we see this effect in the field. We he said, you got a, a security team coming in here. You got the, the CISO and, and all the folks and all that stuff. Don't understand the business. You got a bunch of, they don't have nothing to do, you know, really. 
They're going to weigh the company down. Now, I told you guys there's a book called The Phoenix Project. And there's another book after it. But The Phoenix Project is so good because it, it's it's written as a novel. OK, but but it's it's about a, a CIO, you know, who gets appointed and he's got all these issues. There's a marketing thing that the business is trying to get out, you know, and there's just there's just a lot going on. And in that book, there's a security person. OK. They don't they don't even invite this dude to the meeting. OK, because they know as soon as he set his nuts in here, all he going to do is try to stop us from doing what the hell we trying to do. We got to get this marketing thing done. You, you know, we, we don't have time for all this. All right. He said, like, that's that's not just people picking on security. In reality, security can weigh the business down. Like, that's just the reality. Okay? See them happening. There's a reason why security leaders become dissatisfied with their jobs across the board. And there's a reason why companies become dissatisfied with their security leaders across the board. It's not because boards don't listen. It's because we do not have mature enough leaders, not enough of them in the industry to be able to speak to a board of a language the board, under, board understands. It's one of the things that always amuses me, right? We should be the peers of the other C-level executives who report directly to the CEO. I, I have to ask you the question, what have you done to learn to speak to the CEO? What have you done? We know this too. He's talking about us being able to speak the language of the C-suite, the business. We're not the only ones there. Have you seen a value chain before, you know? And I dealt with the same thing when I was in training. We're support for the organization, okay? We are, IT, we're support function, okay? This is, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's not about us going in there with capes on, you know, the captain save a business. That's not what we're there for. But when we go in there with that attitude, and I listen, I've seen the attitude. Y'all have seen it too. Y'all have seen it too. Y'all see how we be cutting up in there. We cut up. We do. I'm telling you. Let me let you hear some of more what he just said. To learn to understand how security impacts the company, what actual, not, and this is not about vulnerabilities and protecting the product or what have you. This is These are things related to understanding and recasting your role as, uh, in, in the legal realm as the person who protects the company from technology and data liability, just like a general counsel protects it from commercial liability. Do you even understand what you're looking for? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, do you understand cash flows? I, you know, I have a, I have a lot of problems with the, the self-styling that a lot of security leaders have, which is, you know, we're the guards at the gate. We're the ones protecting the company. You're not protecting the company. If you are the guard at the gate, if you're the person who thinks of themselves as the, as the, the person of protecting the company, then by all means, please go ahead and do that. But the deals are going to be done in the basement mm -hmm. that you've never heard of and don't even know how to get to. And it invited uh, to the party. Present. And, and then you're not really a corporate leader. You're just somebody who self-styles themselves as a corporate leader and is very steeped in your technology expertise. My point is all of these things are necessary. Security is necessary even early on. And some of our customers come in at like, we are pre-Series A now, right? This is the, the cycles has gone earlier and earlier. Um, uh, but they don't need that staff full time. That's the point I'm trying to make. Um, and of course I would make it, right? I so he's really big on maturity. And I'm almost certain, I'm not sure, Professor Black Ops, I'm not sure, but I'm all, because because NIST, NIST be doing it, okay? NIST, NIST, whoever them folks is, they are on it, okay? But I'm not exactly sure if there is a maturity model for cybersecurity. I know MITRE has one. MITRE has a really, that it's a really good one. They have a really good maturity model. But um, I'm not sure if NIST has one. But that's 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 what he's talking uh, about. It's about we. So right now, as an industry, we're very immature, very immature. Okay, and you can see it. You. 
I was, what the hell was I? Y'all went on a drive with me the other day and I made like an eight minute video where I said, this, this is not a game. It's business. Okay. We playing a lot of games out here and I'm not just speaking metaphorically. All right. We're playing a lot of games, cops and robbers and, and all that. All right. We're very immature. All right. How, but that's okay. I mean, if, if you're, you know, if you just haven't developed yet, <laughs> okay, you, you're going to be immature in some ways. But I, I, I really feel like many of us are stunting our growth because we don't want to grow up. I don't want to grow up. I'm a Toys R Us kid, okay? Many of us don't want to grow up. We just want to play games and get paid, okay? That's not what we want to do. To grow up, we're going to have to start thinking like a grown up. Okay, how about that? <laughs> start thinking like somebody who has some accountability, responsibility, who's part of a team. You know, when I talked about the cyber range, there's no way in the world why you got a whole range and you got 95% of the team benched while 5% practicing on the field. What the hell? 95 on the bench, on the bench. Ooh. So I contacted him and like I said, I'm gonna have him on here. I'm gonna have my questions, okay? So y'all go watch that video. I watched that one, it's, it's Security Weekly, it's two parts. They split it into two parts. Um, it's very good. And he has some other ones out there too. Okay. So, you know, look at this thing. So I'm going to do all that research because I'm going to, I'm going to have questions. Okay. Like real, I'm going to have, y'all know I'm going to have some questions. So I'm really excited about that. I'm really excited to have found this dude. You know, I was just perusing like I normally do. M. Gray, what do you mean? What do you mean by that? Excuse me. Let me um I'm gonna drop the link just in case y'all somebody wants to come up. But um oh lord, how do I do this? Uh is that how I do that? Yeah, so um I mean you don't have to come up if you don't want to. I was just curious as to what that meant. So you can either type it or come up or you know, whatever you want to do. Um yeah, so it was a really, really great interview. And it goes with what I was talking about, about being on the down low, okay? About being DL as a cybersecurity professional. You know, if, if you, if you, and there, so one of the, if y'all go to that video, y'all gonna see, I have like 50 comments, <laughs> okay? Hey, StreamYard, kick me off. Hey, Professor Black Ops. I don't like how you titled your... Um, your <laughs> <laughs> as a cis general, head of general man, or whatever terms we're using today. I don't like the term down low. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> everything well, I, else I, I, I agree with, it. but go ahead. Yeah. I agree with I everything else. I did. did you hear my, my redefinition of it for cyber professionals? I did, I did. Okay. <laughs> I didn't like that dialogue. I was cool with everything else. But you heard me talk about hackers and and that that profession, you know. Shout out to my man Alpha Cyber. Shout out to Gay Bay. Shout out to King. Yeah, Kaiser. absolutely. They are penetration testing. And uh, I need to invite you. I, I, I'm going to set up AWS a heart. And I, I challenged them to break into my, mm -hmm. my STIG environment when I set it up. But uh, let's get back on topic. But, but you're right. Um, I advise CIOs, CEOs. And a lot of times is that verbiage gets missed. Right. Like you said, we want to put on a case. And like I tell everybody, it's like you is I talk to CIOs, CISO and the uh, the president of our company. They don't give a shit about Linux. They don't care about your routers. They want to know what risk is to that business right. and how much it's going to cost me in dollars. Absolutely. Right. They don't they don't care how much it's going to cost me. And I do federal compliance. I report to IRS or DOD. Are we breaking DOD? What is the mitigating control? Like when we talk about overlay. 
what's your compensated control on how much it's going to cost me? Yeah, yeah. That's what they want to know about, like you said, on a business term, mm -hmm. right? That, you know, I like to put my cape on. I love Linux. I love, or, <laughs> but you get up there, I don't give a shit about that. that how right. much is it going to cost me? Are we in violation? Can they shut us down? Right. Right? right. But some of the stuff I do, if we don't meet compliance with federal government, it's got authority to operate, they'll take it away from you. Right. So that's what they want to know. Can we keep our authority to operate? How much is going to cost me? How quick we can do it? Or do you got a good compensated control that can cost me zero? Right, right. right from, right. from from a business term. So absolutely. And and like and finding ways that like actually doing the work, you know, to find right. out. Who, who are the stakeholders? You know, why why are we even here? How are we contributing? Where where would the business be were we not here? You know, from a business perspective. But you you know, not, not the hackers and all that. I'm talking right. about from a business perspective. How are we, you know, adding value? First, that's the you know what I mean? It's so taking the time right. to do that and not just being there because they know we have to have security for a compliance thing, you know? But, but the thing is, I was in a meeting a lot of times is, because I developed from 15 years ago. So that when you talk about systems from a business continuity, if this system's down, can this system still be up? Is it going to stack up your reports? Is it going to stack up your data? So you got to know from a business perspective how those two machines operate. If this one goes down, do I have to shut this one down? Yeah. And two is, depending on the system, there could be regulatory requirements from a state agency. I deal with taxes. If we don't get tax returns out in three days refund, we owe the uh, constituents interest. Wow. Right. So you got to know. So that's when you're talking about taking a state requirement, exactly. making it to wow. a security requirement. And from an operational standpoint, how does that matter in business? That's when you at the level he's talking about. And that's why I tell yeah. my guys is when you talk about management and VP level. Like you said, you got to take off your tech. We talking business, we talking dollars. I don't care about Linux. Yeah. <laughs> but you gotta yeah. understand operationally what's happening between those two systems. Yeah. So you can understand the compensated controls. Can you risk? And like I said, it also goes up to uh, state requirements from legislators, even. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And even when it comes to the employees, you know, right. the people who who are not leaders in the organ, what's what is their? How are they benefiting from you being there? And do they know that? You know, they like, do. you know what I mean? It, yeah, it, it, it can't be just stop, stop clicking on links, stop clicking on links. Mm -hmm. You know, how can you get intrinsic motivation for these people to be more cyber secure, more cyber conscious? You know what I'm saying? We right, don't even try. You, you yes. know, we're working on that, but that's when you have awareness training and you actually stand in front of people because we stop doing computer based people because people just clicking on that shit. So they can get to their job. We stand in front of our all of our employees. We take them on a segment. We uh, we talk to them. This is why you need business. This can what happen. You know, sometimes it's fear. You don't want to be called. You click on that. Yeah. Hundred dollar credit monitoring. We got thirty four million records. That's a billion dollars. So we shouldn't be scared. But you could be responsible for a billion dollar hack. Now people people get scared to click on shit. Mm -hmm. If we click on them, we lose records. HIPAA is a thousand seven. $1,072 per record if you're negligent. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, so they so, need to know that. Go ahead. So one point that Barack made was with Equifax, which Facts. I guess that's, was the biggest, you know. That's my, that's my favorite example. Yep. They lost half the United States data on one hit. Half the United States. But he said, if security was that important, why is Equifax still in business? He said their stocks went back up after like 30 days. It does because you know we, what I mean? become, we become numb to it. People get hacked yeah. every day. So you're numb. Mm -hmm. you, you just get your credit and monitoring work, right? It's, it's just white noise now. Yeah, it is. It is white, white noise. white noise, right? Until yeah, you but, get that big ass fire and everybody looking at you. But it's, it's white noise because it's somebody else, especially when it's not you, it's somebody else. Absolutely. So, and that's another part of the empathy that I was talking about. We've developed empathy with the hackers. Like we know how they think, how they feel, how all that... Well, what about others? Like, what other blocks can we add to, you know, to to to, to help make a decision on how we can better secure? Thing, you know. So mm -hmm. again, my question when it comes to that is the end game. Yes, yeah. you, you know, you learn that stuff, you think that way, you practice. But what is your goal? Are you really here for security? 
No, no. we're here to get the money. You you think it too deep. You always too deep. We try to get this. I'm trying to yeah, I'm trying to get some fillet mignon and get fat in 2022. That's what I'm trying to do. I ain't trying to save the world like you. I'm just a simple brother. There's Maslow Pyramid. You at the top. You will be right. in the side bowling. I'm just trying to eat a steak. I'm trying to get a little Kobe where the beef get massaged. That's all I'm trying oh to do. Like, you you, you I, talking about the capes. You getting mad. I'm like, shout out to the hat. You know, they're trying to get some money. Great hat. I respect you. Shout out to the game. Yeah, yeah. But I feel you. We need people like you, though. We need more person-centered side because I'm just a simple dude. I'm trying to eat and go home. I, ain't I know. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't trying to. Over I'm old. I ain't got too much left long, left time in this game, sir. I'm, I'm just trying to eat and go home. And I hear you. Stay my yeah. baby's little college money. That's all I'm uh-huh. trying to do. My little grandbabies. That's all I'm, I'm trying not to say the world. You getting mur- You you making my blood pressure go up so bad. I'm like, oh shit. I'm I'm not thinking that deep. So I'm just trying to get a little steak and go home. What's she talking about? Oh my goodness. I mean, but that goes to you know just what he was talking about, like, we, we're just that we're a profession that has a lot of maturing to do, you know, and, and a lot of because I, 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 I see also that there's a lot of colonized thinking, you know, oh, yeah, a lot of colonized thinking. You, and, 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 and you're gonna, it, I mean, you're going to have that sure because I'm from DOD. They beat you in submission. You can't oh, yeah. break chain of command. They're going to send you like ass off. So you so you do get and I tell them that we inbred. Cause you yeah. just learn from it's institutionalized. Not not a lot mm-hmm. of it's good, but you're mm-hmm. not gonna get it. The only, the only reason I sign off on that, Cheryl, is you at the top of the pyramid. You try to think different. I'm trying to beat the young guys in submission to follow the rules with, with, so we can think different, right? And now, I don't I disagree you. with you, but I got mm-hmm. young boys. I don't know what the hell y'all doing. I'm like, dude, I gotta beat y'all submission because this is the plan. This is the stick. This is the this. This is the policy. This is track. I can't get them to do basic stuff. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I hear you. Yeah, no, I get that. And that what you're talking about, there's a role for that. But we can't all be thinking like that. Somebody got to get outside and 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 you know and talk like this dude right here. For you me, know, that's and, this. That's this. for me. That's this and this is this. They go out there. They get all that. They put that in the stick and the this. And I follow it. But I granted, those people need to do it. So much. I depend on them to do it because they do work with private partnerships, universities, mm-hmm. try to get their thinking to put that into the NIST document, right? Mm-hmm. So my first level is let me follow that. Then I might start thinking a little different because we so far behind yes. as a as a um an industry. We suck as an industry. I, mm-hmm. I'm just gonna say like that. I agree. We suck. And, he, and a lot of stuff he said it's a hundred percent, but you know. I'm trying to get to the next level of the pyramid. He at the top of the pyramid. I hear you. Yeah. 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 And things look a lot different. They do. They, 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 they then they do from other parts, you know, because they got that middle part too. Nice. You know, things just look a lot different. So, but I think it, it's good that we're, what I, if I, if I weren't the type of person that I am, this wouldn't, this channel like would not be this. But, but we, we need to. I, mean? no, I think you, you need different people in our facets, and I think you bring an excellent part to that and a different level of thinking. Mm-hmm. I'm fairly trained, and I'm beat down for DOD. So, you know, I, we soldiers, you know, you just tell soldiers to run in the fire, and they just get shot. They don't try to hide. or They just run up the hill. So right. you need some generals thinking in the back. I just take my dude. We running up the hill with the sticks. Mm-hmm. We're going to apply mm-hmm. And that's actually why I had to get out of government because it is like that. Because I'm like, I can't thrive here. There's no room for me to. My paycheck's fat, Cheryl. That's all I'm going to say. My I know. I know. That's all I'm saying. Uh, Shout I, out to I, Keep I, It Techie in the chat. I get paid. So I'm running up the hill, Cheryl. I, I'm running up the hill, Cheryl, but I hear you. I get paid well. I eat well, Cheryl. I'm running up the hill. Go ahead. I know you do. <laughs> oh, uh, since you're up here, before you go, Professor, I. I um. I don't know if you saw the video that I made about the cyber range. No, I don't. You were driving. Is that the one you was driving? I had to cut out. You was driving. I think you were making me seasick too. Oh, I was. Yeah, you <laughs> I was know, driving and you were I'm whipping corners and talking. I'm like, I'm gonna have to catch the replay. <laughs> so I'm, I feel it. I don't know if it's me or her or what's going on. I, I said I catch uh, the recap. <laughs> but I want to talk to you though because I I'm I don't I'm interested. So I have an idea for a range, right? Mm-hmm. But I, but I I'm in, I don't know all the details that it would take to to do, and I don't even know if I'm gonna call it a range. It's really like a business simulation. 
okay. with cybersecurity included, you know? Okay. Okay. So, you know, and I want to see like what's what's realistic, you know, okay. from where I am now and what kind of things I would use. And I think that you would you would know that. So, you know, I'll send you a message on LinkedIn to see when you're available to chat about that. So I can show you what it is. OK, we can make that happen. All right. Thank you so much. You're always amazing. <laughs> I love hearing from you. <laughs> <laughs> nice. But now we need a lot of yous and probably less of me's. But you, you got, are, maybe I got to, you know. I'm a steer guy. I just love doing that that type of work from a federal level. But like you said, you need to think a little forward. I just think mm -hmm. you're so far behind, it's hard to get there. And most companies are just so far behind from that mm -hmm. level. I get it. Okay. Thank you so much, Professor Black Ops. You're welcome. Have a great night. All right. You too. Professor Black Ops is the man. Hi, Linoel. Linoel? Averill? Hello. All right, M. Gray. In a state of immaturity, I still am holding on to some aspects of it, but I realize that I still have. I mean, we all, I, I have growing up to do, okay? Which is a wonderful thing, you know? And and that's why the, the stuff that we do, um, the stuff that we do, I'm so happy to see the content creators in here. Thank you guys for being here. We, um, So when I was in training and development, right, we talk a lot about training and improvement. All right. I did not like that. <laughs> Listen, people got sick of me. You hear me? I like improvement because improvement implies something else. And improvement is about ladders. OK, it's about ladders. Uh, I'm all about growth. OK. Because growth is like a lattice. You know what a lattice is, right? Like on things like this, you put plants on and the vines grow any kind of way. They... So with a lattice, growth is not just like, you know, like this. Growth can be diagonal. It can be on the same thing, the same plane. You can even go down a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Movement. You're moving. You know, you're, you're, you're discovering various things. You know, so learning is not one way. It's not you, you first not first you get your CEH and then you get your your, your C, CSSP and then you get no no it's not linear like that okay like this dude was saying right here you got CISOs right now who may have all the certs in the universe all of them all ISC squared everybody okay but they can still grow with that psychology 101 or that business something or other or biomimicry. That's when you go to nature to help solve human problems. You know what I'm saying? Growth is everlasting. But but the, the issue is willingness to do it. Willingness to grow. You know, there's, there's a whole bunch of improving going on around here, but not as much growth. There's a difference. There's a difference. And the difference can be seen. Okay? You can see it. You can see the difference. Uh, Professor Black Ops, I, I did not mean to trigger you with that uh, that title. Okay, this is just you know, I, I'm trying I'm trying to make a comparison here about keeping trying to keep something secret. <laughs> when we got whatever the equivalent of Gator is, like we got that, you, you know, like we we know why you're here, we know what you're doing. Okay, that that's that's what that was that's what that was about. All right. Y'all, I'm so glad to see y'all here tonight. Thank you so much for being here. All right, I am. <laughs> You're not grumpy. <laughs> I really do appreciate all of you. M. Gray, Professor Black Ops, Lynn Noel, Lynn Noel. Keep it techie. Who else is unknown, unknown, NC worker? Hey, NC worker. Did I say hi to you? I don't know if I saw you. Corey, so glad to see you here. Ayana, you all are awesome, amazing, and wonderful. Okay. Now, let me tell you something before I sign off. All right. I've said this before, but I'm going to say it again. Whatever you have to say. All right. I'm going to need you to go ahead around there and say it. All right. 
I don't, you know, if, if, if it's just you or if it's you and 10,000 other people, like it doesn't matter. Okay. Because what the world is waiting for is you. You holding something, you holding on to something. Okay. You're bottling something up. Don't be DL with your talent. Okay. Whatever your talent is, I'm going to need you to get up off the down low with that. Okay. <laughs> Stop hiding it. Come on out the closet. Okay. Come out the closet with whatever that talent is. All right. I mean that y'all. And you don't have to display it on YouTube or Instagram or TikTok or whatever. All right. It could be just you and your community or something. All right. Because this, this is a, it's a, it's very much a systemic thing, you know, which is the way that we should be in organizations. We have to realize we are entering into a system. What system, you know, got one gear. Huh? They're already got a, a bunch of gears going. When you go into the organization, you're another gear. So you got to, you know, find out what all these other folks are doing around here. You, you, you know what I'm saying? Because you don't want to be in there rusting and shit and people can't do nothing because, you know what I mean? We're, we're coming into a system. So we need to figure out, well, what is that system? Huh? Is it a, is it a system or a business, you know, to, to make sure America is all blue-eyed and, and blonde-haired people? Is, is that the system? Okay. Or, or is it a different kind of system? you know, that, that considers the strength of diversity and all that. You know what I mean? You got to figure that out. Don't, don't just be going in places, providing your blood, tears, and sweat to help them get to where they're trying to go. And you have no idea where they're going. You know, you don't know where they're going at. And you contributing. <laughs> you contributed to get me shut down on YouTube or something because I, I don't look the right way or, or whatever. You know what I'm saying? So, be great today. I love that. Don't wait for that. Do it right now. Thank you for that, Professor Black Ops. Right now. All right, y'all. All right. I appreciate every single one of you. I really do. If you have not yet subscribed to the channel, please go ahead and do so. And I am going to see you back here this week. Okay. With a day in the life of a cybersecurity policy analyst. Y'all have a great one. Peace out.